Today on what it's like, the story behind the Flathead Ford V8. Before the Flathead V8, Ford was building cars for the common man. The Model T and the Model A both were powered by four-cylinder power plants. Most cars during this time period were powered by either a four-cylinder or a six-cylinder. The V8 wasn't a new concept by any stretch of the imagination, but it was more or less reserved for higher car statuses because they couldn't figure out a way to cast the V8 in one solid piece. V8s were made by casting cylinders in pairs and bolting them together in a V8 formation. This was time consuming and costly because sometimes the castings didn't cast right, so then you'd have to start all over again. Ford brought the car to the masses and he wanted to do the same with the V8. Ford started tinkering with the idea back in 1922. By 1928, he wanted to find a way to make his dream a reality. Ford really wanted a monoblock V8 design where the block and the cylinders are cast as one piece to keep things simple and cost down. 1932 Ford Flathead V8 goes on sale. What was the Ford Flathead V8? The crankshaft was forged steel. Block was casting of the crankcase and all eight cylinders in one block. It's important to note that this has been done before, but it's never been mass produced before. Ford was the very first person to mass produce the V8. Three main bearings. Bearings from 1932 to 1935 were the poured main bearing variety. They made the switch in 1936 to shell bearings. Lubrication, I did not know this, but Ford used a pressurized lubrication system for the main bearings and rod bearings, which Chevy didn't offer this until sometime in the mid 50s. And that's why hot rodders absolutely loved the Ford Flathead V8. The very first production flathead V8 was a 221 cubic inch displacement, which had 21 studs. It was slash is broken down into three, I suppose you could call them generations for lack of a better term. 1932 to 1938 was considered first generation and it had modifications throughout its lifespan. 221 cubic inch displacement flathead V8, 3.6 liters, 21 studs. It had a bore of 3.0625 inches in a stroke of 3.75 inches. 1932 was open season for the Flathead V8. It made 65 horsepower with a compression rating of 5.5 to 1. It's important to note that it wasn't smooth sailing or rainbows and unicorns. Ford rushed this engine to market and it wasn't completely dialed in. The early cars suffered from cam problems as well as overheating issues. 1933 compression was increased to 633 to 1, which increased horsepower to 75 horsepower. 1934, horsepower increased to 85 horsepower because the addition of a two-barrel carburetor. 1935, the flathead block was modified with a new crankcase ventilation which improved cooling the engine. Earlier cars liked to overheat, not saying that the later cars don't overheat, but this did help out with cooling. In 1936, Ford updated the bearings from a poured or cast bearing slash Babbitt bearing to a more removable insert bearing, much like what is used today. 1937, crank journals grew. The main bearing journal was 1.999 inches in, in 36, and then in 37, it grew to 2.399. In 1938, Ford updated the 221. This is considered second generation, which ran between the years of 1938 to 1948. It got three more studs, making a total of 24 studs. 1938 to 1940, it made 85 horsepower, increased to 90 horsepower in 1941. In 1939, the 221 was bored out to 239. This is considered third generation. It was first used in Mercury's, but later used in Ford's. It was used in Ford's from 1948 to 1953. This version, the heads were bolted on, so it has 24 bolts rather than studs. It made 100 horsepower from 1948 to 1951. In 1952, power output increased to 106 horsepower for the trucks, 110 horsepower in the cars, and it was the same in 53. 
So let's go through all of the different engine configurations. The 136 flathead V8, 2.2 liters, 17 stud. This is the smallest flathead V8 that was ever made. It was made from 1937 to 1940. It's also known as the V860. This engine came out to provide a more fuel efficient model, which was also a less expensive model to the outgoing model, the 85 horsepower model. This car, this engine, I should say, makes 60 horsepower at 3,600 RPM, 94 pound-feet of torque at 2,500 RPM, with a bore of 2.6 inches, a stroke of 3.2 inches, compression 6.6 six to one it features three main bearings it takes four quarts of oil firing order is one five four eight six three seven two this engine was replaced by the 226 Hellfros over in line six you have to remember henry ford was a very stubborn guy he made the v8 so he wouldn't have to make a six and yet eight years later after making the v8 he ends up making a six anyway which makes 90 horsepower in 1941 we already went over the 221, so we're not going to go back into that one. 255, this engine was just a Mercury engine only. 255 cubic inch displacement, flathead V8, 4.2 liters. It was produced between 1948 and 1953. The 255 uses a 4 inch on the 239, making the displacement 255. Compression rating was 6.8 to 1. It, it's good for 110 horsepower, 200 pound-feet of torque. It's worth mentioning because the parts are interchangeable, and this modification became very popular with hot rodders back in the day. Up next, 239 cubic inch displacement, 3.9 liters, 24 studs, introduced in 1939 as a Mercury engine. Ford would use this engine in 1946. The Ford engine had the suffix A, and the Mercury had the suffix M. The Mercury version makes more power. The 239 V8 was revised in 1948. Studs were replaced with bolts. Bore of 3.18 inches and a stroke of 3.75 inches. Compression is 615 to 1. It made 95 horsepower, 170 pound-feet of torque. Power increased in 1942 to 95 horsepower, 176 pound-feet of torque. 6.4 to 1 was the compression ratio. By 1953, this engine made 110 horsepower in the car version, 106 horsepower in the truck version, 194 pound-feet of torque. It has 24 bolts instead of studs. This version was made from 1948 to 1953 in the U.S. and until 1954 in Canada. Moving on to the biggest and baddest flathead V8 Ford ever offered. And the key word here is that Ford ever offered it because Lincoln made Y blocks as well and they used a bigger block from the start. 337 cubic inch displacement flathead V8, 5.5 liters, bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 4.375 inches. Distributor sits on the driver's side rear. This engine was produced from 1948 to 1953. It was found in the big F series pickup trucks. Yeah, not pickup trucks. They were found in the big series F series, like two ton trucks and so on. F7, F8 series trucks, and Lincoln used this engine as well. The truck version was known as 8EQ and the Lincoln version 8EL. Also, the Lincoln version made more power, 152 horsepower, 3,600 RPM, 265 pound-feet of torque at 2,000 RPM, and the truck version made 145 horsepower. This engine was really heavy as well. It weighed about 850 pounds, has 27 studs. Ford built the flathead design for 21 years, from 1932 to 1953. Why was it discontinued? Airflow was a huge problem in this engine. The valves were placed next to the cylinders. Air had to make 90 degree turns in a complete cycle, which wasn't ideal for efficiency. The intake and exhaust airflow as opposite directions in a flathead engine design. Low compression, cooling problems, but the biggest reason the flathead V8 was discontinued was the block couldn't be any bigger than 337 cubic inch displacement. 
And with overhead valve just over the horizon, Ford would introduce the Y-Block V8 1954, beating Chevy to market. The Chevy overhead valve V8 didn't come to market until 1955. Both engines were rushed to market. Both engines had issues. But getting back to the Ford flathead V8, on the positive side, iconic Ford engine. Like, if somebody says, I have a 21 or 24 or 27 stud, engine you know it's a flathead ford v8 when running exhausts or open headers it sounds like nothing else parts and a lot of active club support against it some can still overheat can get some serious power out of them but it will cost you some serious cash to do so when in stock form it can sound like a sewing machine with just a little growl some people say that you haven't lived until you've changed a water pump on one of these, implying that the job is hard or maybe the job just sucks to do because the engine just sits way down inside. Now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. Flathead Ford V8 Special Edition. Completely random and money is no object. 1932 Ford or... 1933 Ford or 1934 Ford. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving to the second scenario. 1932 Ford or 1940 Ford or 1952 Ford. Going to leave this here again for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to name that tune. First person to give both the name of the band and song title correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!